In this class, we'll discuss about stub matching. Now, stub matching is nothing but another kind of impedance matching. In the previous videos, we have understood that what is a quarter wave transformer, which is nothing but again an impedance matching. Let's try to understand what is this case. Let me draw the transmission line. Now, if in the previous case in the quarter wave transformer, when we try to match this impedance by introducing something called as in between them is nothing but some matching unit and we call it nothing but a quarter wave transformer. But there we only match if my load impedance is resistive, right? But what will happen if my load impedance is complex, right? For what we are saying is let us say it is R plus Jx. So, it is some complex impedance, right? Now, my purpose is to match this impedance so that if I look from this point again, my impedance should be equal to Z0, right? So, it is nothing but stub matching is nothing but matching the complex impedance, okay? So, what I am going to do is I am going to draw the same circuit in a different fashion. Let us see that what is that. So, This is my ZL. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to add a stub here. We will understand what is this stub. Okay. This is nothing but a short circuit. This is short circuit stub. Let us say that this is some length L. Let us say that this is some length L1. We are calling some length. Or let me call this as an L2. Okay. This is my Z0. Now, the whole purpose is to match the complex impedance and this is anyway is called as single stub matching because there is a stub here which is a short circuit is this is what is called as the stub right and this is a single stub. Okay. Now, the whole logic behind this is let us say that some voltage is going like this. Okay. The moment it reach this point what it will see? It will see two paths, right? So, one part of the voltage as a form of wave will go and hit the load. Another valve will go and hit the short circuit path. Again, there will be a reflection from the load, right? Right? It will hit the load and there will be a reflection. One part will again hit the short circuit and there will be a reflection. When the both the reflected waves, which will come from one from this end, another from this end, will hit this point, right? Right? Let me call this as A dash, some A dash point. At this point, if the reflection which happened from both the ends are out of phase and equal in amplitude, then can I say that both the reflection will get cancelled, right? Right? Both are out of phase, 180 degree phase and equal in amplitude, then it get cancelled, right? So, then at this point, if I look, then my reflection would be what? Zero, right? If the reflection is zero, it is the only possible case when your impedance is match, right? So, when I look from here, again I will see same Z0. So, it is again you see, if I look from this point, the impedance are match, right? How can I do that? Let us proceed on this, how I can proceed on this. So, we know that as these two are in parallel, what I am going to do is, I am going to deal with admittance. Because admittance in parallel get added up, right? Okay. So, let us say that Y is equal to 1 by ZL. So this is nothing but the admittance and y is equal to g plus j b. So, I am saying that we are going to deal the admittance, y is the admittance and that comes out to be g plus j b. Okay, this is my admittance. Now, what is my purpose is, if I go to this Smith chart, now we are talking about this. G plus J B will be some point anywhere. Let me mark that point. Randomly, I will mark that point. Let us say that point is somewhere here. I do not know the value, right? Because these are some values. So, let us say that that value is somewhere here. So, that will have a real part and that will have a complex part. So, I pointed on a Smith chart. Now, what I need to do is, if I move by a distance, let us say you know that what is this? This is nothing but the circle where resistance is 1, right? This is the circle you see, right? If I move a length, if I move a length such that when I hit this point, right, 
this length I'll call it say L2, right? Because at any point on this, let's say that it is nothing but G plus JB, right? But if I hit this point, what it will become? It will become again 1 plus JB because your resistive part has become what? 1, right? So, what we are saying is though your admittance or nothing but let's say that G plus JB, the admittance here, but if you travel a distance of L2, which is nothing but if you travel some distance L2, which is nothing but this distance we are talking about, right? What will happen? And the point where you are hitting that circle is hitting your resistance 1 circle, which is nothing but this, your resistance part will become 1, right? But the your other part, the complex part JB will remain JB, right? Okay. So, this value, this will become nothing but at this point, this impedance will nothing but become 1 plus JB, right? Now, if for the short circuit, we will start from this point. If I travel some distance, I do not know what is the distance, I am just randomly saying some distance L2 such that the impedance, the impedance when I look from this end at this point, it will become minus JB. It may happen that, right? Remember that in the below it will become minus, right? So, if I will start from this point, if I move some distance, because I will be knowing the, in practical I will be knowing these values, right? So, if I move a distance of L2, it will become minus JB, right? So, this impedance has become minus JB. At this point, the admittance get added up, right? Nothing but we are dealing with admittance in term of admittance. So, at this point, it will become nothing but your equivalent admittance, I will say equivalent will be nothing but 1 plus JB minus JB, right? So, what it is? 1, right? Now, this is your normalized admittance, right? 1 is your normalized admittance. In order to get the uh, in order to get the full impedance, what do you need to do or admittance? You have to multiply with Z0, right? So, if you multiply 1 with Z0, it will become what? Z0. So, if you look from here, your impedance is again Z0. So, you have matched the impedance, right? So, this is what is called as single stub matching, right? So, I will repeat that. What we have done is nothing but we have taken admittance here, which comes out to be G plus JB. Then I travel some distance called as L2. I have traveled some distance on L2 on the Smith chart such that I hit the uh, constant resistance circle of 1. At that point, the value has become 1 plus JB. Okay? So, this value after traveling a distance of L2, it become 1 plus JB. Then I have taken the short circuit part. If I travel a distance, if I travel a distance starting from this, if I travel a distance of L2, it become minus JB. Right? So, admittance has become minus JB. If I add at this point, it becomes 1 and this is a normalized. So, when I will take the full admittance, it comes out to be or again the impedance comes out to be Z0. So, this is what is match and the maximum power will be transferred. But there is some limitation of single stub matching. What is the limitation? First thing, in practically, how you will add the stub? This will be some wire, right? Long wire and then you will have antenna and then you will have a source, right? In order to in order to add this stub, what you need to do is you have to drill it. Let us say that it is a coaxial wire, right? You have to drill somewhere and you have to connect this, right? So, what happened on the wire? You drill and you connected two points and then you connected the short circuit stub. Now, based on that, you once for that circuit, you fix L, L2 and this. But again, if your load changes, again you have to change the length, right? You have because the stub length, the L2 will get again changed, right? So again you have to drill at another place and you have to connect that, right? Again this length. So it is a very difficult job to do it again on especially on transmission and drilling and again connecting the stub at different length, right? So they come with another method called as double stub matching, where they have provided the solution of this, where you don't have to always drill and find the point where you have to connect the stub. In the next videos, we will see what is the double stub matching.